You moved a motion to do with the business and functioning of the Legislative Council, and um, which was unanimously approved. Mm -hmm. And first of all, tell us the reasons uh, behind the motion, if you could. I think that every Timwell member would wish to see the best outcomes for legislation that that is produced by by Timwell. And certainly there is a huge amount that, that government has in its government programme. I think it, there's about 36 bills. And clearly the primary role of the Legislative Council is to legislate. So really the idea of having a, a committee to reflect on some of our processes that lead up to that, whilst the main consideration of legislation will stay in the actual public sittings of Legislative Council, it's just to provide a way for us to look at what we do and, and how we do it with a, with a view to improving legislative outcomes for the islands. In Timwood last month, we saw a move from Anne Corlett to reduce the number of people on the Legislative Council. Um, an amendment from Laurie Hooper also came in to do with the, bish uh, the bishop's role in that. Um, we're yet to see that debate concluded, of course. Is it coincidence that you're bringing this sort of immediately afterwards, really, or is it prompted by that perhaps a bit? Well, no, because there, I think um, there are newer members to the Legislative Council, and I, I'm certainly one of those those newer members. Um, and I think with any with any organisation, it is it is right to reflect and look at you know how you're doing, what you're doing. You know, is there is there a better way that you can have a have a an improved grounding for doing that for the Legislative Council? That's deliver the legislative and the, the uh, scrutiny role w within the, the parameters of our, of our branch. Um, now it's something that has been on my mind for some months. And, um, you know, with these sorts of things, you have to talk to people, you have to listen to people, you have to think back as well as to some of the previous um, wishes that were expressed as to how the Legislative Council would evolve. Now that's not, not something that has just happened in the past four weeks, else it wouldn't have been something I would have been able to be, uh, you know, have, have such a, you know, round of support in the Legislative Council to do. Um, but all, all the same, it, you know, it's it, it's timely and it's and it's a positive way forward. But also, we're, we're at the start, really, of the legislative year um, with us new members having a full year behind us. Mm -hmm. So it, it just seems like a really, really good time to reflect and, and to listen and uh, really shows the, the willingness of the, the current Legislative Council members to carry out its role as, as best as we can. We saw you a few months ago step down, down from your departmental role mm -hmm. and the reason given was to do with uh, scrutiny, mm -hmm. um, or maybe one of the reasons, but is this part of the same feeling maybe, do you think? For me it is, because at that point what I wanted to do um, was to focus more on my role in the Legislative Council and you know that this is part of a of a result in in that for me is just keeping that focus most importantly um in the in the motion that that was supported by the, the Legislative Council um was that you know we might report from 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 time to time on on various things within the remit but but um specifically excluded was reporting on policy matters you, so, sorry carry on so if you so if you think about the the roles that um different the different branches play that tim will plays that the scrutiny committees play there is a role that you know legislative council has to play in that so for me it is about you know focusing on and i'm very happy to, to spend my time focusing in on those aspects of the job and it's um being in a department has uh certainly al allowed me to spend more time thinking about that function in your address, you mentioned there were 37 bills coming in this legislative year. Mm -hmm. Is that unusually high, first of all? I think it's the highest it's ever been. But, I mean, it's really positive because the government is bringing forward some significant social pieces of legislation. And when you have legislation, legislation come through like that, then you can look to see how things are handled elsewhere. There may be relevant case or there might be particular legal concepts that would be worthy of looking. So it puts everybody... Tim Wald members, the public, in a position of advantage if each part can seek to do its role the best that it can do. If it's the bit busiest ever legislative year, potentially, mm -hmm. um, can we therefore infer that scrutiny is of more importance now than it, than it has been ever too? Does it work? Is it, can, we, can we be that kind of crude with that? 
Well, I, I think I think so, definitely, because the demands that will be put because of the rightfully high aspiration of government, mm -hmm. and in addition to that, there are private members' bills coming through. You know, it's not possible for everybody to catch everything all of the time. So most in particular, the Legislative Council has, has a role really in that branch being a con considering considering the legislation, a revisory branch, oversight, all of that, all of that stuff that, that really is what scrutiny is about. That's the chance. So when you have lots of legislation, it does put things at a better outcome if you've got a, a good level of scrutiny to match. But if you've got such a busy workload, which it sounds like it's going to be, is that going to affect the quality of the legislation or of the scrutiny? Well, I think the point was made um, in other sittings that that actually, and actually, I think in Timwald as well, is that you know it's 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 quality, not quantity. But the point is, is that there is aspiration to deal with, from a legislative point of view, really significant issues. So it's down to everybody in their own individual role that they can play to make sure that we're getting things as right as we can or or making sure to to correct things or spot errors or to 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 um question or probe to make sure that we're getting the legislation to be as fit for purpose as, as we can so i think i think it's a good opportunity to do that with um uh, political uncertainty overseas was it inevitable perhaps that it was going to be a busy legislative year is that is that partly to do with it do you think or is it more to do with domestic affairs i think we need to ensure that we're able to be responsive and flexible enough to certainly to deal with those things but at the same time there are serious uh matters that that government is endeavoring to sort out here that require legislation um so you need to really be able to, to do both um and you need to be able to have the flexibility to respond to things if they're if you know, if, if it's part of a bigger picture you know beyond beyond the shores of the isle of man um but also i don't see any sense that there is a a willingness to kind of relax on the domestic agenda if you like in terms of legislation so there yeah that there's a will to to try and, and do it all and to progress those as well as we can there are things in the in the legislative program for government that have been um demanded for a long time things like the landlord registration bill there's domestic violence uh, bill coming up as well so that there is a real will so i think every timber member would want us to do the best that we can in that uh, legislative delivery um, and that is of course in addition to all the other roles that lots of other timber members have so this is where i see legislative council being able to to support the, the other members and the House of Keys and the government in terms of delivering that. So you've got unanimous support um, amongst your colleagues in the mm -hmm. Legislative Council. Have you had any feedback from members of the House of Keys? Well, there's actually a part of what what we're doing where we would hope to talk to um, members of the House of Keys because, of course, we are there at the behest of the House of Keys. Yeah. And there has been lots of uh, um, consideration debates previously about, you know, how well what the legislative council should be doing and its scrutiny role and things like that certainly we've had uh i've had people come say well, well no that's really good it's good that you're looking at this and and you know seeking to focus in on that way um with anything new it will be a case of seeing how it how it plays out but there is absolutely a will um in the legislative council from from all members really to be able to have those conversations with house of keys members so we can kind of keep it open keep it consultative and in a way the committee itself is is a way of doing that in a transparent engaging and open manner so what's the timeline when will we see results from this well the idea is that we can change and and um improve on some of our internal i mean in some ways they are kind of administrative uh uh, organisational uh, aspects um, whilst the main business of considering legislation happens in the sittings um, so that is, is I mean it's it's kind of really organisational and, and probably not that interesting <laughs> but then you know I think that at some point it, it, it may get to a point where where we have established uh, a way of working that actually feels like it might be worthwhile to kind of maybe take 
you know take take forward but that's what it's about really it's it because it is a select committee it allows us to um, explore and examine and reflect on these areas and we can see what comes from that but we can also um, look to think about how we can just uh, apply ourselves to the forthcoming legislation and when I, when I say forthcoming I, I, I really do mean you know what what is looking to be on the legislative agenda for for council in, in the the upcoming months because of course ultimately when we consider it we're considering it as a as a product um, once it has come from the the house of keys so much of this is really about you know internal readiness which is like, I think that you would seek that from any organisation if it has a particular job to do, which clearly Legislative Council does. I'm hesitant to conflate this too much with the debate about numbers in Legislative Council, right. but in a couple of months' time, when that debate does resurface, mm -hmm. hypothetically, if Timwald is in favour of reducing LegCo numbers, does that scupper these plans a bit, do you think? My view on all this, and obviously that, that debate is uh, it's been adjourned. You, so you, you spoke during the debate, so I did. You've, you've given some of your views, obviously, already. But. I, I have, yes. Um, and and um, the debate will be continued at, at, a, at a later date. But really, my, my view on all this is quite straightforward, is that, you know, from my perspective, we have a job in hand, and that, that job is is to focus on, on the legislation that we have before us, and it is to do that, uh, that scrutiny role. There is value in looking at how we do that. And I think that given the huge amount that is going on at the present time, it's really not helpful to get distracted by all those other aspects. Um, these other considerations will come up. However, there is there is a job to do. And so that's absolutely what I want to, to focus on.